All right, everyone. I hope all is well. This is All Pro Exterior Services again. Back at you with the 8 gallon a minute IGX 800 build. Anyway, I got the skid back. Just going to give you an update. Had some feet welded on it. I'm going to mount it in three spots on each side. I still got to build the frame for the trailer. Uh, what else did we get? Let's see what we got. Got a box of parts in. We got the uh, banjo, one and a half inch Y strainer. 80 mesh got some more uh, pucks in to mount the pressure washer got some high temp silicone and this sounds very strange but I confirmed it twice with Udar but they say is what you use on this shaft instead of using an anti-seize clean it off with alcohol very good Clean the keyway off with alcohol. Clean the inside of the pump off with alcohol. Apply a thin layer of this around the key and around the shaft. A little bit inside the, the gearbox. And it'll come off in 10 years. So, never heard of it before. So, we got it. We're going to do it. Anyway, got a couple one and a half inch hose barbs for the Y strainer. Also ordered some... Uh, <clears throat> from Russ Johnson some lemonade scent for my slow-mo just to give it a little bit of scent That's land. Yeah uh, Had to get some nozzles So I can uh, set the regulator So I got an eight and a half nozzle to set my pump at 3500 eight gallon a minute So we're good there uh, A couple whip lines from Russ got the inch and a half barb the three-quarter inch intake for the pump got the ZK1 flow unloader from General Pump flow sensitive so you don't get the kickback on the initial squeeze of the trigger of the gun uh, got the unloader block mount this to the trailer again to keep the weight of the unloader off of the pump and of course you know my favorite got to get that new m5 twist for the 8 gpm it's my jam so i had to get the new one so i'm gonna have to color code these or something so i know which is which so we'll figure that out <clears throat> got some miscellaneous fittings that i think i may need so, if we do, great. If we don't, great. Uh, and I got this hose. Inch and a half in, inch and a half, nine collapsible suction hose. That I'm going to feed the pressure washer with. And also, guys, <laughs> uh, you know, they send you these MSDS sheets. I put mine in a Ziploc bag, keep it in my toolbox on my trailer. You never know when you're going to get pulled over. So, anyway, we got all the parts. All right, I went ahead and just marked everything just to kind of show you what I'm doing. I turned the skid upside down and I just kind of measured, you know, the center. It's a two by four mount, so I just went one inch by two inch and put me a center point. Got me a punch, made an indention so I can drill my, <clears throat> again, I'm going to drill these four because it's going to be underneath the engine. I'm not going to be able to drill it. I'm going to wait on these two because I don't think I'm going to have to drill here. I think I'm going to have to go a little further out just the way it's going to sit on the trailer. So I'm going to go ahead and at least get these in so when I mount the motor, I already got these already in, so that's not a problem. So anyway, I'm not going to drill on camera. I don't think you need to see me do that. But I am using my step bit from DeWalt, which eats through this metal pretty quick. Well, again, weigh your proper PPE when you mess with this kind of stuff. You don't want no metal in the eye. So anyway, let me get to hopping on this. I'll be back with you shortly. All right. Is what I decided to do is I came this skid we cut it down to 22 inches kind of the length of the gearbox and engine put together so we got this voltage regulator and a lot of companies or people mount them on the side here of course this is a bigger one than a 690 so is what I'm gonna do is I <clears throat> came in right here about 14 inches from that way and uh, I'm gonna drill my holes I already got it marked but I'm gonna put it underneath the skid Kind of like that and route the wires through the channel and come around to plug in right here 
and then ground it out. So that's really the only thing I could do. Uh, just thinking this through without the stand built on the trailer, but I think that's a good option. Because you can't come from the side because, again, you're going to be sitting on an angle iron on the side. At least you got a channel to come through. I can always, you know, tap it in here with some tie straps if I need to. But I think that'll be a, the way to go. So I'm going to go ahead and get that drilled and be back with you. All right, I got the hose drilled for the voltage regulator. I also got some of this double-sided sticky, well, not double-sided, it's one-sided. It's weather stripping. It's pretty thick. I had some laying around. I just went ahead and put some on the back side so when I mounted it, it's got a little bit of cushion between this and the metal. It didn't have nothing there. I would have thought they would have, but I was like, you know, I got it. Put it on there. It ain't going to hurt. Help with vibration, maybe. So, again, that's things you could do when you're building it. Take that extra step and, you know, do something like that. It may not even matter. I don't know, but it's something I'm going to do. So, I'm going to go ahead and get this mounted here and then run the wires around back to the engine. All right. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and install the drains it, drain line, HON 1420. Again, I already broke the plug, so you got two plugs, one on either side of the engine. You can use either one you want. There's a gasket on the plug. You can see it there. You're not going to use this gasket or this plug, so just kind of put yourself to the side. And then, of course, we'll wipe this up a little bit. But then, here you go, you got the gasket. There's a copper gasket and an o-ring on here so it's a little tricky to do you kind of got to try to hold the hose straight to get it in but you line it up right and it'll work perfect so we'll get that done I'm move this up a little bit just put a little drain pan there so And again, once you install this, you don't take it out. You just use the end of the hose to uh, drain it. You don't have to over tighten it either. And then the end goes in like this. And then it'll stay right there. All right, guys, got that done. Clean up your mess. Any residual oils. Let's do All right, guys. I uh, just got the pump temporarily mounted. I just, again, I'm going to design a support. So basically, I got the center of the, the base plate right here and right here. And I'm going to draw it out once I get it all done. But let me just show you what I got. got a piece of all thread. And essentially, is what I'm going to do is I got a nylon nut on here. And of course, I put a washer one of those bumpers that mounts the pressure washer essentially screw it on like that put your flat in a lock washer and put your nut on the top something like this so and i'll drill a hole in it and put two nuts two nylon nuts on either side to squeeze it in to kind of help support this pump uh, you just want to make sure that the head of the bolt or the nut is not over because obviously that nut will be scraping on the plate so i may have to take a washer out or something but that's kind of kind of what i came up with piece of all thread i just cut it down so i don't know if it's going to work we're about to find out so let me get to working on this and uh, be back with you in a second all right guys here's the center point for the mount that i made to help support the pump which again i don't think i need but i got the parts so i'm gonna drill a hole here Pop this in, screw it in, and then put the pump back and see how it works. And then we can adjust it accordingly with the nuts on it. So the only concern I got with this piece is the nut, if you can see, it, it it's clear. I mean, if this thing ever wears out, this nut could rub on the plate. I just have to keep an eye on it. But I don't know if that would ever happen, but we'll see. So again, this is something for now. I can always do something later, but let me get to uh, drilling and uh, get you back on in a second. All right, guys, got the whole drill for the uh, stabilizer, if you will. And it actually fits pretty good. Because what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and screw this in just a little bit. So we can see how it works out. And, and again, we can adjust it 
on the fly, so just want to get it down good enough. Okay, that's all the way down. So let's reinstall the pump. Let me get you guys at a good angle here. Okay. Put this beast back on here. And I'll put a bolt just temporarily just to hold it. And you kind of want to put some pressure, make sure it's all the way up. Okay. It looks good. So let's see. Oh. Look at that. Boom. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and get this bolted up. Not not too tight because I got to take the pump off, clean it up, and get it ready for install. So, all right, guys, be back with you in a second. All right, guys, next order of business is to mount the pump because the exhaust would be a lot tougher. If we mounted it first, it would be a lot tougher to tighten the bolts off of the pump. So, we're going to go ahead and do the pump. Now, I talked to Udor directly a couple of times. And they recommend cleaning the shaft and the inside of the shaft on the pump, the housing, where the shaft goes, which is right here, with that alcohol. And they also recommend putting a high temp silicone, which this goes up to about 650 degrees, on the shaft, on the key, and inside the pump. I've never heard of that in my life. I was going to use high temp anti-seize, but he told me three times, and they've been doing this over 15, 20 years, and the reason you do that is later on, if you want to get the pump off, it, uh, it'll come off. So I'm going to take their advice, never heard of it, but I'm going to run with their advice and use this here. So I'm going to go ahead and clean all this up with alcohol before we apply a thin layer. You don't need a thick layer because it's very low tolerance between this and the shad. So... But anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and get that done and, uh, yeah, be back soon. All right, I got the everything cleaned up with the alcohol, which, again, just rubbing alcohol. Never heard of this method, but supposedly this method creates a seal so it doesn't allow water to get into the shaft. And it's a high temp, again, 650 degrees, which is more than enough. So this is something new to me, guys, so... I've never heard of this, and I've asked multiple people. Nobody's, everybody recommended an, anti seize, but I'm going with the engineer from Udor who recommends, highly recommends putting this on there, which I'm surprised they don't recommend it in their instructions. So, again, you're going to put a little bit on here. I don't need much of this. I had to get this tube here. I wanted to get a fresh tube. He said just put a thin little, little coat on it. So, we're going to go ahead and coat it up. Because again, this is a uh, very low tolerance. And I am using some gloves. That way we don't create a big mess here. This is crazy. But they know, you know, the, the engineers. <clears throat> Get it in that keyway. Make sure you got a good little bit underneath. I did find one YouTube video that ex said the same thing, but it was just one video. You would, again, okay. So put a little bit of layer on a key. And the key, the tolerance for the key is actually I had to kind of beat it in to be honest with you. So I'm about to do the same thing. I'm going to grab a quick hammer. Okay. All right. A little more silicone on here. Put a little bit in this pump shaft. Up. 
there you go. I did put some anti-seasonal bolts. Okay. Put the cap back on this beast. And then we'll go ahead and tighten it up. And it's important the silver washer and then the black washer on the head of the bolt. Hey guys. Looks good to me. I like it. All right. Let me go ahead and uh, get to the next step. All right, guys. Got all the bolts for the exhaust has anti-seize on it we're just going to go ahead and put our exhaust gasket on one side get all that excess off two sides all right here comes the muffler and you got on this engine you got two studs one's longer than the other this one's set back further so it should go there so let's see how this thing's gonna work it's like a glove let's go ahead and get a nut on this it'll make this the easiest thing to get to but it's all good but yeah it's uh it has been fun for sure Always fun getting your grind on. Trying to make that cheese. And you know, a lot, I know a lot of guys do this with the Predator engine. And I'm not knocking the Predator engine. I'm not. But, you know, I think it was advantageous, obviously, to go with the Honda if you can afford it. Okay. I hear great things about the Predator, then I hear horrible things about the Predator. And you know me, y'all know me, I didn't want to take that chance out in the field. Okay, hey guys, we're getting very close. We got us a belt. Look at that, look at that beast. These things sell 40, I looked online and I seen them with the same pump engine Honda muffler make sure because they got these knockoff mufflers that are not Honda they made in China. I heard they crap But I've seen them online for forty four hundred dollars Can I tell you I'm a grand cheap already. I know that for sure So yeah, if you got the time and money and want to get involved with something like this, it's not a bad idea Anyway, I'm gonna look at uh, I do need to get the bolts for the engine. I got some temporary bolts as half inch bolts. I'm using uh, I think it's half inch or seven sixteenths. So I need to get some grade eight. And then I need to get the grade eight bolts, half inch to mount the pressure washer to the trailer. And then put in my fittings. That's what I'm gonna do next. So let me get the fittings together and I'll be back in shortly. Alright guys, got the fitting here. Inch and a half hose bar, three quarter inch NPT. I'm gonna go right in here. I'm gonna go ahead and go with true blue as a sealant. So we'll take a little bit of this true blue out. <clears throat> true blue, I, I like true blue better. Just put your nice little coat on here. Then Teflon tape it gives you a good seal. Not to go too crazy with it, but 
Make sure we got no leaks. Do a good job coating it. Go ahead and put it in like that. And I got some big channel locks here. Now is what I've decided to do here is what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to run the hose, my jump line, that's going to go to my unloader, which is going to be close by. And this jump line has uh, it's a solid, it don't move fitting, you know, 3 8 And then this one has a swivel on it. So I'm going to use this one side for the unloader. And I'm going to put this side in here. So that way I, I eliminate the quick connect. I'm not opposed to quick connects, I just don't have many left. So, you know, if you got them, great, you can use them. That way if you got a jumper hose problem, you can swap it out on a quick. If not, just go. Just do it straight. Not a big deal. Again, true blue. Coat gives you a nice little coating on this thing. Don't think you put too much because you can always wipe it off. Okay, that's good. And since this, you straighten out your line as much as you can. There you go. And this one is a 11 sixteenths. All right, that's nice and tight. Clean off your wrench right away when this stuff's wet. And if you want, you can do a quick little wrap around. But I like the way that looks, so we're gonna leave that alone. So there's your jumper hose. Gotta go to the unloader block. Which again, I'm not I'm sure you can load it. Here's the block here. So essentially solid piece of steel or brass whatever it is so I'm gonna have our motor which again is a ZK1 flow sensor so that so this out you see it's got it's got an in and an out three eighths out so basically is what we'll do is Screw this into the top of this, like so. And then this hose will go in here, so out the pump to the end, out of the unloader to the block to your reel. And this is a bypass, so you put a hose barb on this. At least 10 pounds, having that on the pump, that's one reason you take it and put it on the unloader block, to get the weight off, the vibration off of your unloader, and go from there, so. A lot of people mount them on a pressure washer. It's up to you. All right, guys, let me get the next step. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and take out this red cap. If you don't, it will blow. So let's go ahead and take this off. Put our dipstick that comes with in it. It's a vented dipstick, so. Okay, that's good. See here, we got a good oil level and here so you got multiple sight glasses the only thing i need to do is put some oil in the engine put some oil in a gearbox which i probably should have done before the muffler but it's okay we can just run a tube here it's got your little sight glass and everything so you're good there i do got the <clears throat> somewhat this is the unloader so i put the bar the bar the bypass so we know that's going to happen half inch I didn't screw in the hose or screw it into the block because I'm, I need to really get the pressure washer mounted to the trailer before I can determine what configuration I want to put this block. <laughs> Excuse me. I did put the 3 8 nipple coming out of it, so that's already. So, again, I just, I'm going to wait to do this. So, it'll be good. But, yeah, all good. We're all, 
pretty much done here. We've got the bypass and almost hooked up. We've got the jumper line hooked up. We've got oil. Just put some oil on that. Mount the motor. Wish I got some bolts in it, but I'm going to go get some more bolts. Ain't a big deal. <clears throat> and then once we get that, I just need to get the engine stand mounted on the trailer so we can get this bad boy mounted. And of course, uh, your cables for your uh, engine. I'm going to run one the negative to the, to the mount on the engine here. Which, by the way, they had a screw hole here. I did the uh, negative for the uh, the ground for the uh, regulator, and in here you, where you put your just put your uh, positive cable there to the battery, negative to the negative, and yeah, bro. Oh. And then we'll crank this beast up. So hopefully, again, maybe next weekend. I do have a couple jobs lined up. I got to go get knocked out, but I wish I had this thing to help increase efficiency. But it's okay. I need to go knock them out and sometime, somehow, some way, make time to get this to the, to my, my guy so we can go buy a shop and fix everything up. So anyway, that's it guys. We're done. We just need to get it mounted to the trailer, plumbed up, which I, I have all the plumbing and I'll make another separate video of that. But this is, this will conclude the build of the 8 gallon a minute IGX 800 UDOR pump, 8, uh, 3500 PSI. So, any questions, hit me up. I'd be more than happy to help. Peace.